Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be transforming the layout of our index page using divs. I had originally said that we would create a new page and start over, but I think we already have some content here and this page could actually be partitioned into looking like what the typical website looks like with a header section, a navbar section, content, and a footer, all right? So here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be saying, and I'm just going to add comments so that we can remember exactly what needs to go where. So this is going to be in the header section. And then what we're going to do is add a nav. So I'm going to just put a comment to say nav start. And then we're going to have nav end. All right. So we have somewhere where the nav will start and somewhere where the nav will end. And let me just say header end here so that we know exactly where each div. So all I'm doing is adding comments so that we can say what div we're going to put there and for what purpose. So after we have our header, for which we have some content, we have a nav which we'll be building soon. And then I'm going to say that this is the content. So content area and everything that we've done, the list, the picture, everything up until let's say the containers, the end of the containers, all of that will be our content. So end content here, all right? So every example that we've looked at up until now, all of those code examples will fall in our content. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is a footer. So I'm going to say footer, sorry, I went to control F instead, apologies. So inside this comment, I'm going to have footer start and end footer, all right? So now let's start adding divs to facilitate the sections that we envision. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do inside the header section is add a div. So I'm going to open my div tag, close it at the same time. And this is very important. When you open container tags, if, I mean, I, implore you not to open any tag and fail to close it, but it is especially a nuisance when you open a div tag and don't close it properly. All right, and then sometimes you can have a div inside of a div and that just ends up being messy at those times. So please always open and close before you start putting content, all right? So we open this div, we close it at the same time. And then what we're going to do is take the contents that we had designated inside of our header section and place it inside that div. So all I did was cut it and paste it inside of the div. Now it's always a good idea to give your containers names because when you have divs upon divs upon divs, it's easier for you to identify what this div is for when you give it a name. So we can always say ID is equal to, and so we're using the ID attribute. So we're giving each, well, elements. So different elements can have IDs. Any element can have an ID, right? I can give the H3 tag an ID, the H1 element, the P tag, everything can have an ID. But I'm I'm especially um, recommending it for the divs because we want to give them the ID so that they, we can readily see what is inside of this container, all right? So I'm going to call this div header. More than one elements the same name or the same ID. So we have our first div and that is our header. And if we take a preview of this page, you won't see any visible difference really. It looks the same way. The only difference is that if I right click and go to inspect, then you would be able to see that it is inside of that container called the header. All right. So the, I mean, it won't, you won't see instant changes, but you will start, if you start inspecting your page, you will see the sectionalization um, when you highlight the page, all right? All right, so now that we've created our header, we can move on. So we have a section here that we said we want the navigation to be. So I'm just going to create another div, and then I'm going to call this one, give it an ID, of nav. So I'm not going to put much content in here yet. I'm just going to put a few anchor tags. So the typical website is going to have home, about us, and maybe contact us. So I'm just going to say href. And then a good way to put a link that goes nowhere would just be to say href dollar sign, or sorry, number sign, or hash, 
however you say this, but some people say pound. The fact is that when you put that there, it registers it as a link, but then it goes nowhere. So right now, that's all we want. So I want an anchor tag that goes nowhere, but says home. And then I'm just going to add like a, a pipe. So that's shift and backslash if you're in the west if you're using a western keyboard otherwise i'm not entirely sure where to tell you that that symbol is but if you don't have that symbol you can use a dash it's it's really not a big deal at this point because this is not the real nav bar we're just putting stuff in there so we can see our section so i have the anchor tag for the home then i have a boat and then another sectioner and then let's say contact us all right so those are the three links that let's say i'm going to have in my nav bar so if we look back at the preview then we see our nav section and once again if i inspect element then you're going to see nav section the nav div with the content all right so then we can do the same for our content here so content we can open our div and then this is a lot of content. So I have two options. I can cut all of the content and just place inside the div. Or in this case, I'm just going to take the closing div, take it off, and then remember that that is very dangerous. So if you're doing that, remember to put it back at the correct place also, right? So I just took the closing div off the opening div and I'm scrolling all the way to where I said end content. And then I'm going to paste it and then well, I was kind of hoping Visual Studio Code would help me out and indent, but indentation is really, really cool. So I'm going to actually go back through all of what I have in content and press tab. So I just highlighted all of that, pressed tab so that it indented it so I can see exactly where this div starts and where it stops, right? And then I'm going to give it the ID content. So then the final one would be for the footer. And I already have the div here that I'm going to use for the footer. So what I'm going to do is that in addition to the style and the background color that I already set, I'm just going to give it the ID and say ID is equal to open and close quotation marks. And look at what happens when I fail to close it, right? So always remember to open and close your quotation marks. And sometimes in editing, you'll end up with three because it's trying to help you. And sometimes in helping you, it does the wrong thing, but all right, so then we're going to give this one the ID footer. So when I take a look at my page once again, I'm going to see no real visible change. I still see the background for the footer area. And even though I tabbed the code, notice the content is still all the way to the left. So we did say that we wouldn't want it all the way to the left and all the way to the right. We probably wanted to take up like 90% of the screen um, with margins to the left and the right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create one big div and I'm going to call it container. So I'm going all the way up to body and then I'm going to say div and then say ID is equal to container. All right. And then this container is going to be the base div for every thing on the page. So remember that these containers can be inside of other containers. So the header container, it is going to be inside of the container div. So I'm just going to take this closing one. I'm going to highlight everything. And remember, I, I love to see my code indented. So I'm highlighting everything. And then I'm going to press tab to get everything indented. And then underneath that, I'm going to paste the closing div tag for the content. So if you just want to track what is what, you can always expand and collapse. So everything is inside of my container. When I expand that, I can see the header. I can see the nav, I can see the content, and I can see the footer, all right? So everything is inside of my container. And let me just get rid of the white space in between. So what I want to do to my container is make it take up 90% of the page and kind of be center aligned. So let's start with our inline style. So I'm going to say style, width is equal to, and I did say 90%. So when it comes to units of measurement, everything you see listed here is an option. You have EM, you have REM, X, PX. PX is probably the most 
popularly used one because if you do graphic design, you should be used to what pixels are. But you have all of those. But the one that I'm going to be using is percentage. All right. So I'm saying that I want this div to take up 90% of the page. And then look at what happens to the content now. Just use the HR tag as the marker. Remember that our HR tag stretched right across the page, right from left to right. No, it is only stretching up to 90% of the entire document. If I right click and say inspect element, and then I go to the container div, then you're going to see once again, the blue area is the amount of space that the element takes up. And then the orange area would be whatever space is left over. So the orange area there would be the 10% of the page. All right, so our next step now is to make our content kind of center line. So it's taking up 90%, but we want it to take up 90% with the respective, with the leftover 10% equally distributed to the left and to the right. So it should be 90% from the middle or in the middle with 5% to the left and 5% to the right. All right, so I'm going to take the time out now to introduce you to a new concept of how we implement CSS. So up until now, we've been using the style attribute and the selector and value pattern, and that is what we call the inline style. Now I want to show you the internal style sheets. So the internal style sheet is a bit more efficient or, well, it's just as effective because they both can change the style, but it's more efficient because then you can have a more global declaration of a style inside of your document. So I'm going to explain exactly what I mean. So the first way to, or the first step towards implementing internal style sheets is to go to your head tag right and then you know underneath title after you've done all your meta stuff and you have title you introduce a new tag called style all right so style is going to hold all of your css code now when you say style you have a few options you can reference a tag and then start talking about all the styles you want on that particular tag, or you can reference something by the ID, or we can create what we call a class. I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to show you the tag versus the ID, all right? So let's start with a P tag. When I say P and then open and close the curly brace, what I'm saying to my HTML document is that I am about to declare some CSS styling that needs to uh, govern what my p tags look like. So when I do this, every single p tag on the page, say I have one, two, sorry, one, two, and a few others, I have a bunch of p tags on the page. So we have more than enough p tags to see the difference in. When I declare a style here, every single p tag on my page is going to inherit this style. So if I wanted all p tags to have the font of Arial, Right now with in, inline styles, I would have to go to this P tag and say style equals and put in the font family, this and that. And then I would probably have to copy and paste and find every single P tag in my page to get that style across. So while it's effective in the tiny applications that we've been using it where we just want to style one element here and one there, it is very inefficient when you have you know a big html document and you have a number of tags that you just want to look the, the same way so what i'm going to do is say that i want all p tags to have the color and i don't want anything too out of the norm so i'm going to go with something like gray i want every single p tag to have the color gray and I'm also going to say that all of them should have the font. So to change the font style, you say font family. And I'm just going to go with this default suggestion of Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. All right. If you're not using Visual Studio Code, then if you just write Arial, then that's fine. Right. So you can just say Arial if you want. Visual Studio Code is going to suggest three because it's saying that if I can't use this one, I'll use that one. And if not, then I'll use this last one as a last resort pretty much. So I want all P tags to be gray and have um, Arial, or Helvetica or Sans Serif as their basic font. So let's go back to our page, having made that change and take a look. Everywhere that I had a P tag is now gray and they all 
have different fonts. See that? So we have the P tag and we have the span, right? And if you look at the difference in the text, you'll see you have the H tag, but you have the P tag and you have this other span. So you can see that when we use the inline style, we can more globally put, or we can put more global styles to our tags in one place, all right? The next one that I'm going to show you is to reference something by ID. Now, what if I wanted to style my header div in a particular way? I have a few divs. I have div I have for header, I have a div for nav, I have a div for content. So it to me, it would be obvious that if I wanted the header div to look different from the nav div, different from the content div, I can't just say div and put a style because then that would style every single div in my page. And if I wanted the header div to have a shade of gray, uh, maybe center aligned text and something else, it I wouldn't be able to target it directly by just referencing div. So by putting the ID inside of our div, it allows us to directly reference the exact div or the exact element that we want. So any element that has an ID can be directly referenced by that ID. <clears throat> directly referenced by that ID, and then we can apply that style. So when we are going to reference something by ID, what we want to say is hashtag or pound or number sign, however you say it, and then we call it by the name. So I want to target my header div or that element with the ID header. So I say hashtag header, and then I can start applying the style. So what if I wanted the background color of this to be, and then here's where our hexadecimals come in. So up until now, we've been using the stock colors that Visual Studio Code gives us. Um, the more targeted way is using what we call hexadecimal, right? So I can use the pound and hexadecimal is any alphanumeric, sorry about that, any alphanumeric combination. Um, it's six characters long. So you can see I have F1, F1, F1. So that is two, four, six. And then hex goes between one to nine and A to F. All right. So that is hexadecimal. So when we talk about hex, if I change one value here, I'm going to change the entire color. If I say F2, F1, and let's say I said D1, then it would change, even though you're not seeing it visibly or very visibly, but it would change the shade. So you can see it's more yellow now than it was gray. So with each change that you make inside of the hexadecimal combination, you're actually changing that color. But I want it to be F1, F1, F1. Let's keep it simple. And that's some shade of gray. All right. So I want the background of my header to be that shade of gray. I also want to center align the text. So I'm going to say text align, be center. And notice that it's the same selector and value pairing, right? The only difference to the syntax now is that we have the style tag. Then we reference whatever element it is that we want to change, open our curly brace, put in our selector value pairs with the semicolon as many as we want, as long as we close our curly brace. So the last thing I want to do is add a padding of 20. So padding is like a little spacing that we can put in in the content itself. So the content is in the container, but then when we say we want padding, it's like we're saying that the container should always put this much space between its borders and any content that is in there. All right. So let's just take a look at what that renders to out to be. So we can see here that we have our header div alone being targeted one. We can see that it has a different um, background color. That's a shade of gray that we put in. The text is now center aligned. And you can see that there's some daylight in between the content and the borders of our div. And that will be the 20 pixel padding that we put in. So that is essentially how we can go about styling our pages using inline styles. And when we start creating more pages, you realize that this is far more efficient because we can declare a style one time and have it replicate a 
across the page instead of for every page we have to go to each element and put in the direct style that we want and then when you have a 10 page uh, web application i have to change a common style between all the pages then you have 10 changes to make right so when we use the internal style sheets it's a bit more efficient for us to style our elements.